All right, welcome to 2.5, part one. Um, we are going to look at inequalities. So we'll review a little bit about reading and interpreting interval notation, and then we are going to solve some compound inequalities. All right, so to review interval notation and inequality notation, so C and D are going to be real numbers where C is smaller than D. So imagine that those could be numbers. And we'll just review kind of how to convert between interval and inequality notation. So first here, it's important to know that our less than or equal to and greater than or equal to, equal to symbols mean we use a brackets because those numbers are included in the interval. If we just have less than or greater than symbols, parentheses will be used, and it means that those numbers are not included. So as an example here, um, if we're looking at any number that's between C and D, including C and D, we would do C to D like that. All right, so less than or equal to symbols mean we use brackets and then C to D. So why don't you take a minute here to pause your video and see if you can convert the rest of these into interval notation. All right, so if you look at this, we should have these. Um, C to D, parentheses, because you're not including C and D. Here you're only including C, so that's why there's a bracket around C. Here you're only including D, so that's why there's a bracket around D. These last two, sometimes people get tripped up by these, but we're looking at any number less than C. So C is the biggest it could possibly be, not included. And then to go as small as we can, we would use negative infinity. Um, X greater than or equal to C. So C is the smallest value included, so there's a bracket. And then we can go anything larger, so we can go all the way to infinity. An important thing to remember, infinity and negative infinity will always have parentheses around them. All right, write each of these in interval notation. So it's basically what we just did. Now we're using actual numbers. A couple of these you have to convert using words. So let's take a look at just this first one. Um, X is between 5 and 13, so we are looking at any value from 5 to 13, and we're including 5 and 13, so we have brackets around them. So take a minute to pause here and do B through F and write those in interval notation. All right, so hopefully you saw here um, negative 4 to 1, very similar to A, only we're not including negative 4 and we're including 1. Anything less than or equal to 7, negative infinity to 7, put a bracket around that 7. Anything greater than or equal to 6, put a bracket around the 6 all the way up to infinity. Sometimes people have trouble converting the words, so x is at most 4. So that means that's the largest it could be. So anything smaller than 4, and the way I read this, I would read this as we include 4. So 4 is the largest it can possibly be. We can go as small as we want to negative infinity. Some people get tripped up on the wording of this one too. X is positive. So we think, okay, that's just going to be, that's going to be numbers like one, two, three, and then any decimal in between there are all positive. So anything greater than zero. One thing, important thing to remember is zero is neutral. Zero is not negative, nor is it positive. So that's why zero is not included here in this interval. All right, we can represent intervals on number lines. Number lines can help you visualize your solution a little bit. Um, you will be seeing me use some of those to visualize our solutions. So just as an example here, I will go ahead and do this first one with you. So we're looking at the interval from 9 to 25. So 9 to 25. Now, these don't have to be drawn to scale. I just want to see you know, that you kind of know how to draw these. And we're looking at anything between 9 and 25. We're not including 9, but we are including 25. So if you see a parenthesis, think open circle. And if you see a bracket, think closed circle. And then to show anything in between there, just draw a line connecting the two. 
So knowing this now, what open circles represent, what closed circles represent, see if you can do the remaining three here. All right, so in B, we're including negative seven and negative two, so we should have closed circles at those two values. Um, at C, we're looking at numbers less than or equal to five, so closed circle at five and then anything to the left of that. And then D, we are not including negative two and we're looking at numbers bigger than that. So open circle at negative two and then arrow goes to the right towards all those positive or towards all those values larger than that. All right, solving linear inequalities and then expressing your answer in interval notation. So th these kind of represent what should be basic linear inequalities. Um, they're called linear because they are in linear form, mx plus b. So we solve these much like we would solve regular equations. So first we would start by trying to isolate the x. So we're going to add 1 to both sides. So we get 2x is less than or equal to negative 4. Then we want to divide everything by 2. So we get x is less than or equal to negative 2. And we want this in interval notation, so pay attention to those directions. So x is less than or equal to negative 2, so negative infinity, 2, negative 2, and include negative 2. Okay. All right, keeping that in mind, see if you can try letter B. Again, get all of your x's on one side. Pause here and see if you can solve that. All right, so part B... Okay, if you're looking at mine and thinking, oh shoot, I don't have that. I think I know what happened. So basically you subtracted this x from both sides to get a negative 5x, added the 3 to both sides to get a 10, right? Well, to isolate the x, then you have to divide by negative 5. When you divide by a negative number like that, that means you have to flip the symbol. So if you're solving these inequalities and you're dividing or multiplying either of those two operations by a negative number, you have to flip your symbol. So that's why we ended up with x greater than negative 2. So then your final interval notation would be negative 2 to infinity. All right, compound linear inequalities. So these we're going to solve the same way. Remember that golden rule, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. Compound inequalities, we have an expression in between two numbers. And this is just it's the kind of a simple compound inequality. So what we're going to do is manipulate this to isolate the x in the middle. And just make sure whatever you do to the middle, you have to do to the left and to the right. So first we're going to subtract 6 from everything. So we get negative 4 is less than 4x is less than or equal to 2. Then we divide everything by 4. So we get negative 1 is less than x is less than or equal to 1 half. So our solution should be any number between negative 1 and 1 half, and we could include 1 half. Now sometimes when we get to more complicated ones, it's a good idea to check that solution, like, oh, okay, do the numbers, is there, if there's a number in between there, does that work when I plug that into the original? So if you look here, negative 1 to 1 half 0 is in between those two numbers. So if you plug 0 in for x up here, you would get 6 is between 2 and 8. Okay, that works, right? That would make sense, okay? Um, so maybe get in the habit of just kind of mentally checking that and making sure your interval makes sense, especially with these compound inequalities. Sometimes they can get a little messy. All right, keeping that in mind and keeping in mind what happens when you divide by a negative with these inequalities, see if you can give letter B a try. All right, so 
if you look at this one, we subtracted 6 from everything. And then if you look here, some, some bells should have been going off. Since we're dividing by a negative number, we have to switch both of our inequality symbols. So if you switch those, you get actually kind of a reverse inequality. This goes from bigger to smaller. So make sure when you write it in your interval notation, you're going from smallest to biggest, right? We read from left to right. We have our smaller numbers on the left, larger numbers on the right. So our interval should be negative 8 to 6. All right, so this is kind of a fun one. Um, really what's tempting with this one is at what everybody wants to do. So I want to say, oh, okay, well, I just need to get the x alone in the middle, so I'm going to subtract 2 from everything, and then I'm going to divide everything by 3 but then I have x is still on the left and right hand side, okay? So as to not overcomplicate this too much, what you're going to want to do with one like this is kind of look at it in two parts. We have this inequality and we have this inequality, okay? This 4 minus x is less than 3x plus 2, and then this 3x plus 2 is less than 5x plus 4. So what we're going to look at here is first what's underlined in red. I'm going to just deal with that as one inequality. So 4 minus x is less than 3x plus 2. All right, I'm going to do this like I normally would. Subtract 3x, so I get negative 4x. Subtract 4, so I get that that's less than negative 2. Now I'm going to divide by negative 4. So I get x is greater, we divided by a negative number, than 1 half. All right. Um, and then I'm going to deal with this blue part. 3x plus 2 is less than 5x plus 4. So subtract the 5x, subtract the 2, so I get negative 2x is less than 2, and then divide everything by negative 2. Ding, 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 ding. Flip that inequality symbol greater than negative 1. All right, and then what we are going to want to do from there now is, oh, we have kind of two things going on here. We're saying that x can be greater than negative 1, or it can be greater than 1 half. Well, which one is it? Um, so let's look at this visually for a minute here. So this is where being able to graph these on a number line kind of comes in handy. All right. So if we look, we have, let's see here, negative 1 is less than 1 half, so we can put 1 half over here, and then 0, I'm just going to put a kind of a placeholder in between there so we can see the difference between the negative and the positive, so 0 right here. All right, so if we're dealing with the first inequality, x is greater than 1 half, we would go to the right, and then x is greater than negative 1, we would be going to the left. And with examples like this, usually it's pretty safe to say then, oh, okay, well, they're overlapping over here greater than one half. So that makes sense. So duh, x is going to be greater than one half. But you don't want to discount, we did get some solutions that were between negative and one half, right? x greater than negative one. So what we're going to want to do is test a value in between there just to make sure we can leave those out of it. So I'm going to test out 0 here. So I'm going to take 0 and I'm going to plug it into my original here. So if I plug 0 in for x, basically that means all those x's go away. So I end up with 4 less than 2 less than 4. Is 2 between 4 and 4? No, that inequality doesn't make sense. So then I can say, oh, okay, well I can discount anything between negative one and one half. So then in fact, x should just be greater than one half for my final answer. So if I write this, one half to infinity. 
All right, so when you get those trickier compound inequalities, just double check, make sure that what you're seeing does make sense um, with what you kind of got visually there. So go ahead and do some practice. Good luck. See you for part two a little later.